Good morning and welcome to the worship of the Lord. Welcome to Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you're here on this beautiful Lord's Day morning. We hope this hour of worship draws you closer to the living and true God. How do we approach God? You know, there's a line in an old hymn that says, all the fitness he requires is to know your need of him. In other words, all that is needed to come into God's presence is an awareness of our need, our need for his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness. And so as an expression of that, let's start this worship service by confessing our sins to God. And we're going to use a prayer of confession. It's going to be printed on the screen. Let's pray this in unison as a prayer of forgiveness. Confession. Praying in unison. God, our Heavenly Father, how comforting to know that you declare sinners like us completely forgiven, totally accepted, and profoundly loved through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Forgive us for seeking refuge and security in other things and people rather than in you. Pardon us for living in the bondage of sin's dominion rather than in the security of your love. Deliver us from our unbelief of your promises, our unwillingness to forgive others, and our pride. For we pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a verse that says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Do you believe that? Have you confessed your sins to him? Then in Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Well, our opening hymn this morning, our opening song is a song of praise that calls all creation to praise God. And so let's stand for our call to worship. It's from Psalm 148. It says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord from the earth, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord. Let's praise him with singing. Good morning, Coral Ridge. My name is Matt. I have the incredible honor of worshiping with you today. As we worship, I would encourage you to keep your mind fixed on him. If your heart seems to be wandering at the moment, just ask him, Lord, center my heart on you so I can worship and praise you. Amen. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia! Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Wow. 
living hope. He is our eternal hope, our hope of salvation. So as we sing this next song, it's just a beautiful reminder of where we've come from and where he's taken us, all because of his sacrifice. So if you've experienced that, if you've experienced him lifting you out of the pit, I just want to encourage you to remember him, to thank him, and to love him for that. The word says that we love him because he first loved us. So because he's loved us, let's take this opportunity to love him back. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living home who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to where and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Thank you, God, beautiful Savior. I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ.
death. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you that the power of the resurrection lives in us. We lift your name up high this morning, Jesus. We exalt you. We exalt you as King of kings and Lord of lords. May your name be lifted high, not just in this place, but in our country. May your, lay, may, may your name be lifted high in our hearts. And may we exalt you over everything. We are just so thankful for the freedom that we have in you, Jesus. The freedom that you've given us with such a high cost. Thank you for calling us your own. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. We've united our voices in song to the living God. Let's now unite our voices with believers around the world and through the ages as we confess our common faith with the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and please give your attention to the screens to see what's happening in your church this week. Good morning and welcome to Coral Ridge. We are so glad that you've joined us this Sunday for worship. There are a lot of exciting things happening in the life of our church. Here's a quick look at what's coming up and how you can get connected. We are excited to announce the lineup for our 2023-2024 concert series season. This season will feature an incredible lineup of shows and world-renowned artists. We will kick off the series on September 29th with a show you won't want to miss, Michael W. Smith Live in Concert. Be the first to access premium seating and season benefits by signing up today to be a concert series benefactor. Visit our concert series website for more details on how you can get involved and for ticket information. If you are new to Coral Ridge and haven't heard about our vision for the future, we would love to introduce you to the Generation to Generation Capital Campaign. This campaign is a culture-shaping movement that will further our vision to equip gospel-centered, culture-shaping Christians from generation to generation. To learn more about the campaign, get updates on the construction, and find out ways you can partner with us, visit our campaign website at crpc.org slash g to g. If you have been blessed by Coral Ridge, we invite you to support the ministry financially. You can do so online or with a tithe envelope. All of this information can be found online at crpc.org or at the info kiosk in the Narthex after the service. If you are visiting with us today, please take a minute to fill out a connect card from the pew rack in front of you or a digital card online. We are so glad you've joined us this morning. Katie, thank you so much and we are glad that you joined us this morning. I want to, first of all, I want to welcome you to Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church and wish each one of you a very happy and blessed Independence Day weekend. You know, as I was sitting there this morning, I was reminded of the privilege and the freedom that we share uh, and experience every single Sunday, but also thinking about our brothers and sisters around the world uh, who don't have that same freedom. We don't have that same right uh, to worship freely. And so I pray that today and tomorrow and over the 4th of July holiday that you would take a moment to just give thanks to God, uh, to be reminded of the, the first freedom uh, that we celebrate in this nation, the, uh, the freedom of religion, the freedom to gather and to worship um, without any fear of retribution, uh, but also to remember our brothers and sisters around the world who don't have that freedom, who don't have that same right uh, to worship freely, but that this 4th of July Independence uh, Day holiday, uh, that you would be overwhelmed with a sense of gratitude for the freedoms that we experience and share together in this nation. 
You might have noticed this morning that we're missing a very familiar face from our worship together here at Coral Ridge. I want to let you know, some of you have heard this news already, uh, but our contemporary worship leader, Bernie Gonzalez, has transitioned out of his role as the contemporary worship leader here at Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church. Bernie and Kim Gonzalez were brought here by God seven years ago. In fact, Bernie was my first hire when I became senior pastor. He has done everything from relaunching the traditional worship service six years ago uh, to leading faithfully in this service for the past four or five years. He sang in our concerts. He has uh, led some of your children and giving them voice lessons and music lessons, and he has served this church faithfully. And so I ask for two prayers for this morning from you, the people of God here at Coral Ridge. One, would you pray for Bernie and Kim Gonzalez as they seek uh, God's calling uh, in their life? Uh, we believe that God is not only the God who closes doors, but opens doors and that God would open new doors for the Gonzalez family. And also pray for us, the church leadership, as we seek leadership, new leadership for this service. Uh, you might have noticed a new face this morning, Matt Rodriguez, who comes to us from Ocean's Edge School of Music. Uh, we're going to have a rotation of worship leaders for the foreseeable future. Uh, these men have graciously uh, come on board, and we have worship leaders for the next five weeks, and more than likely beyond, but pray for the church leadership, not only as we seek interim worship leaders on Sunday morning, but seek God's man as the new leader of this service, this 930 service here at Coral Ridge. So pray for the Gonzaleses, pray for the church as we seek a new leader uh, for this service. Well, this morning we continue our study in the Psalms, and we're looking at Psalm 102, and I've got to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever been more excited to preach on a psalm as I am this morning. Um, I've never preached on Psalm 102 before. Uh, it, as Pastor Andrew mentioned on week one of this sermon series, uh, we had one rule this summer. We just had to pick a psalm, but it couldn't be a psalm that we preached on last summer. So eventually, we'll make our way through uh, the Psalter, but this is a psalm I've never had the privilege of preaching from. And what I want to talk about this morning as it's revealed to us in God's Word in Psalm 102 is the unchanging nature of God. Theologians have called this the immutability of God, right? You can leave here and tell your friends, what did you learn in church today? I learned about the immutability of God. The immutability of God is simply the doctrine that tells us that God is never changing. And so if you are able and willing, would you stand as we read, select verses from Psalm 102. We'll look at Psalm 102 verses 1 through 4 and then look ahead at verses 18 through 28. For some of you, you might have this as a title on at the beginning of your psalm, but this is the prayer of a man who is afflicted, a man, a, a prayer of a one who is overwhelmed. As we read through this passage, you'll see a life that is ruined. But not only is this the prayer of a man who is afflicted and overwhelmed with his life, but theologians have identified this as a messianic psalm. What does that mean, messianic psalm? A messianic psalm is a psalm that although it was written 3,000 years ago, ultimately is a reference to the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. That we will see in this passage as we study it this morning that the speaker of Psalm 102 is ultimately the Son of God who has come as the Messiah 2,000 years ago. Psalm 102 verses 1 through 4, and then 18 through 28. The God who never changes. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bur bones burn like a furnace. My heart is struck like grass and has withered. I forget to eat 
my bread. Look ahead to verse 18. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord, that he looked down from his holy height from heaven and The Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and Jerusalem his praise. When peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship the Lord, he has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. Oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days, and whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you lay the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away, but you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you, and the grass withers and the flower fades, but not the word of our Lord. It stands forever. Amen. You may be seated. I don't think I'm enlightening anyone here this morning when I say that everything changes. Everything changes in life. There's not one single person in this room today or watching at home that hasn't experienced change in some way. The change of your home, the change of your family, the the change of a spouse, your marriage, your children, your vocation financial security, God seems like he allows us to exist in a world and in a life that is constantly fluid, constantly in flux, and actually the only thing that is constant in life is the change that we experience on a daily basis. In the 21st century, we live in an era of unprecedented change particularly in the area of technology. Does everybody remember when Amazon was launched over 20 years ago? It was some obscure web-based internet site where you could buy books. 20 years later, we can have our entire grocery list delivered to our door. We can buy medication. We can buy our entire shopping list and Christmas list at the click of a button. It is a world, an error of unprecedented change. I remember Dr. Al Mohler once saying that an individual born in the year 1900 has more in common with a person living in the days of Moses than a person living in the 21st century. Think about that. A person born in the year 1900 has more in common with Moses than a person born in the 21st century. And so in a world and a life that is constantly fluid and constantly changing, where do you and I find hope? The only place you and I can find hope is in the reality and the truth that we know of a God that never changes. Let's study Psalm 102 together this morning. I want us to look at first the reality of our ever-changing life, two, the truth of the unchanging God, and three, the hope and the comfort of the unchanging love of God. First, though, the reality of our ever-changing life. If there's one thing we can take away from the beginning part of Psalm 102, this life in despair, this life that is afflicted and ruined, is a life that realizes that his life is in despair because it's being cut short. Actually, in verse 24, We've realized that this more than likely is a middle-aged man. Oh God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days. A man that is looking at his life and realizing that his life is being cut short. In the midst of my days, in the middle of my years, my life is being cut short. And he's in despair. And in verses 1 through 4, he describes the state of that despair. In verse 4, He says that he can no longer eat. In verse 7, he says that he can't sleep and that he's alone, he's isolated. More than likely, these are all signs of clinical depression, that he can't eat, he can't sleep, 
He's isolated from his loved ones. He's in a state of deep despair. And what caused it? Well, it's interesting that the psalmist uses this metaphor of grass. He says over and over again in Psalm 102 that my life is like the grass. I'm withering away like the grass. The Bible often uses the metaphor of grass to describe the temporary nature of our lives. That's why every single Sunday we say what? The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord, it stands forever. What the psalmist is coming to grips with is the sobering reminder that nothing in this life is forever, that everything changes that everything is temporary. Even looking at his life being cut short and it's causing him to stop eating, it's causing him to stop sleeping, he's in this deep state of despair and affliction. We are confronted in Psalm 102 with the hopelessness of our ever-changing life. Realizing that everything valuable slips away and you know it and I know it. It's the reason we're so nostalgic. It's the reason we can't let things go. It's the reason why some of us love to live in the past because we like to think that in the past was better than the present, and if we stay in the past, we won't be reminded of the sober reality of our ever-changing lives. That's why for some of us, if you were to allow us into your garage or into your closet, it would be full of things that you don't use anymore, clothes you don't wear, things that you haven't looked at in years, but you can't let things go because we need to do everything possible in our power to hold on to things. Somehow, maybe, it will keep us from being reminded of a life that is always changing it's why some of us love control. If you're someone like me, we love to schedule every moment of the day. And if you're really like me, you hate surprises. Why? Because surprises causes a change in our schedule. It causes a change in our routine. I want things to be the same. I want a normal rhythm of life. But every single day we're confronted with the reality that no matter how hard I try to schedule out my day, no matter how often I try to gain a new rhythm in life that is constant and familiar, that there will always be something that disrupts my schedule, always something that disrupts the rhythm of life because the reality is that no matter how hard we try to control things and schedule things and map things out, we live in a world like the psalmist recognizes where nothing is constant and everything changes. There's some of you this past year that are dealing with immense pain because you are experiencing firsthand change, the loss of a husband or a wife, the loss of your health, the loss of family and friends, the loss of a career or a job, the, the loss of financial security, each one of us at some level, whether it's been this past year or some recent season in life, is, has experienced firsthand the constant flux of life, and it hurts and it's painful. Parents, we can all relate at some level that we don't want our children to change. We want to hold on for dear life. That's why we often use the phrase, having to cut the umbilical cord. Because one day we're strapping our children into the car, and the next day they're strapping us into the car. One day we're handing them the keys, and the next day we can't even find our keys. It is the cycle of life, the loss of what's familiar. That's what the psalmist is experiencing here in 102. We often sing the hymn, our God, our help in ages past. And one of the verses reads this, time like an ever rolling stream bears all its sons away. It's the reality of life. 
the sober reminder that nothing is constant. I don't know Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church or Westminster Academy without Guy Metzger. I've never known a moment since I've been here at this church and at this school without Guy Metzger. Until now. Guy Metzger's no longer here. Things change. Life gets upended. And we're confronted every day with the sober reminder of the reality of our ever-changing life. Everything changes, except for one thing. Not only do we see in Psalm 102 the reality of our ever-changing life, but secondly, we see the truth of our unchanging God. In verse 27, we see the truth and the reality of our unchanging God. But you are the same, verse 27 says, and your years have no end. You see, in the midst of an ever-changing life, in the midst of his affliction, in the midst of his despair, where does the psalmist go? To the self-help section of his library? No. The psalmist does theology. The psalmist goes to the truth that there is one thing in this life, there is one thing in this world that is constant and is the truth of an unchanging God. He gets to know his God because this is what he needs. Listen to me. You will be tempted in a life and in a world that is constantly changing. You will be tempted to think that you need something more than God. But the truth is, the one thing your soul craves... The one thing your soul needs is the reminder that God is forever. There never was a time where there was no God. God is not getting older. God is not getting wiser. There is no beginning and no end. And it was the one thing the psalmist needed in the midst of peril, in the midst of affliction. He needed his life to be anchored on this truth that he's as relevant today as he was 3,000 years ago for the psalmist, that his promises are true yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His character never changes. Anything he liked 3,000 years ago, he likes today. Anything he hated 3,000 years ago, he hates today. His character never changes, and his truth never changes This is the truth of God. He is unchanging. God hasn't changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament to the 21st century church. The Ten Commandments aren't now the Ten Suggestions. His truth remains the same from generation to generation. And God is unchanging. He transcends time and culture. That's why relativism never worked and never will doesn't matter what happens in this world. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives. It doesn't matter what happens in family, in our marriage, with our children, with our job, in our nation, in our culture. God is the rock from generation to generation. It was the promise that the psalmist held on to as he was crying out to God and saying, my bones are dangling on my flesh. I can't sleep, I can no longer eat, I have no hope except for this one unwavering truth that your years have no end. And I'm here today to remind myself and to remind you in your moment of affliction, in your midst of turmoil, in your life right now that might seem like nothing is constant and everything is shifting, there is one constant, and I pray that you would hold on to him. It is the truth of a never-changing God. He is our rock, and his years have no end. But it's interesting that in the midst of affliction and in the midst of an ever-changing life, Not only did the psalmist need to be reminded that God never changes, but he needed something more than that. And that brings us to our third and last point, the comfort of the unchanging love of God. It's interesting that the doctrine of God's immutability 
the reality and the truth that God never changes. Although that was something that the psalmist needed in the midst of his turmoil, he needed something more. You see, the greatest philosophers who have ever lived believed in a God that never changes. Many philosophers talked about God as the unmoved mover. But what this psalmist also needed was not only the truth of an unchanging God, but the psalmist needed to be reminded that his love never fails. That not only is God unchanging, but his love is unchanging as well. Because it was the reality of God's unchanging and relentless commitment to him that alone would sustain him in the hard, alone would sustain him in a world that was being turned upside down. But the question is how? How in the world would the psalmist be able to cling to the promise of God's unchanging love? In fact, the, soul, the majority of Psalm 102 is about how everything is changing. In verse 26, it says, even the mountains, verse 25 and 26, the foundation of the earth, the heavens are the work of your hands. But verse 26, even they will perish. Even they will not remain forever. The Rocky Mountains seem like they're not going anywhere. But the psalmist says, even they will not last forever. So in the midst of Psalm 102, a psalm where nothing can be trusted in this life, nothing is permanent, nothing is forever, how in the world can we bank on God's unchanging love for us? The answer comes in verse 28. In the midst of a world where nothing is constant, in the midst of a life where nothing is the same, there is one thing. In verse 28, it says, The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. What is the psalmist saying? The psalmist is saying, Even though I die, and even though I'm in the pit, and even though I'm in the midst of affliction, the promise is this, that my children and my children's children will dwell in the presence of God forever and they will be established. The word established in the Old Testament Hebrew means to remain forever. How in the world can the psalmist make that claim? Remember I said at the beginning that this is a messianic psalm. In Hebrews chapter 1, the author of Hebrews refers to seven different psalms and attributes Jesus as the speaker, the ultimate speaker of that psalm. And one of the seven psalms that is referenced in Hebrews chapter 1, you can go back and look, particularly in verses 8 through 10, is a reference to this psalm right here, that Jesus is the one who ultimately speaks this psalm 3,000 years ago, decades before he would come to earth. Because after all, who was the one whose life was ultimately cut short? Who was the one that was cut off? Who was the one that was hanging on the cross and his flesh and his bones exposed who was the one that would suffer and die, but only for the promise so that his children and his children's children will dwell in the presence of God forever? It is none other than Jesus Christ. It was Jesus on the cross, follow me here, that did experience the changing love of God the Father on the cross. On the cross, when Jesus took on our sin and our unrighteousness, he experienced being forsaken by the Father. The one thing Jesus always knew was the constant, continual love and favor of God the Father. But on the cross, when he took on our sin and our unrighteousness, it ceased in that moment. And he no longer experienced the favor and no longer experienced the love of God. Why? So that you and I, on our worst day, 
would never doubt that he is for us and not against us. On our worst day, when we go, no way God could be in the midst of this. There's no way God could be for me. We can look back to the cross and remember that God didn't even spare his own son so that you and I could live with the forever promise that his love has no end, that his commitment to us will endure from generation to generation. The one thing the psalmist ultimately needed is the one thing you need this morning, not only to know that God is unchanging, but that his love for you has no end. He is forever, endlessly, relentlessly committed to you. Why? Because Jesus Christ, the immortal one, became mortal. Because Jesus Christ, the immutable one, became mutable on the cross. Only through Jesus could he be committed to us forever. 60 years ago, our founding pastor, D. James Kennedy, started an evangelism training program called EE. And if you've gone through EE, you're very familiar with the first two questions. They call them diagnostic questions because they help to diagnose the person that you're talking to and that you're witnessing to. And the first question in the EE outline is this. Are you for sure that if you were to die tonight, you would stand before God in heaven? The operative word in that question is sure. And it's a rather audacious word because there's nothing in this life that is sure, and there's nothing in this life that is certain, except for one thing, that Jesus lived, and he died, and he rose again from the dead, and whoever places their faith and hope and trust in him alone can actually live with an audacious assurance and audacious certainty to live with the promise that there is nothing in life, neither death nor life, nor anything above nor anything below could ever separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you have trusted in Jesus Christ and repented of your sins and believe upon him, then you can live with that audacious assurance and that rock-solid certainty of the unchanging love of God towards you, that you believe that on the cross, the wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus Christ so that the wrath of God might never be poured out upon me as his child. A.W. Pink said the unchanging nature of God is to the Christian a comfort, but to the non-Christian a terror. God's love for the Christian will never change. But his justice never changes either. Your only hope this morning is to be found in the cleft of the rock. To be found in the one that absorbed the wrath of God for you. The one who took on his justice and absorbed it perfectly so that you can live with the promise that you will never, ever, ever, ever be forsaken Everything in this world and in your life will slip away. And if you are building your life on anything other than the rock-solid assurance of Jesus Christ, that is a foolish, miserable life. If you're building your life on your personality, on your career, if you're building your life on your marriage or your children or your bank account, it is utter foolishness. Build your life on the one thing, the only thing, the only one that matters, the unchanging God and his love that endures forever. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, in a life that is constantly in flux, in a world that is constantly changing, our hearts and minds and souls need to be grounded in the one thing that will endure forever. 
Lord, we praise you this morning for you are the one God whose years have no end. There is no beginning. There is no end. That you are the God that remains forever. But not only are you the God that has no end, but because of Jesus Christ, your commitment to us is unwavering and it endures from everlasting to everlasting. Relationships will come and go. Our lives at times will seem like they are in the pit with no hope. But I pray that our lives would be anchored to the rock-solid assurance that because Jesus lost the favor and love of God on the cross, I can live with the forever promise that that love has no end. He will not grow weary. He, he will not grow tired of providing for his children and his children's children, but that we will dwell in the presence of our God and our position with him will be established forever and ever. Only because of Christ and Christ alone. If there's anyone here this morning that has built their life on something other than Christ alone, may today be the day of salvation where they repent of their sins and look to the one who took their sins on the cross the one on the cross who was forsaken by the Father so that by faith alone we would never be forsaken by the Father. The one who experienced the wrath and justice of God so that instead we could experience his love and his grace and his mercy. And the testimony this day be, I believe. I for the first time believe. May that be your testimony today become a child of God, be saved, and be reconciled to him. May the unchanging nature of God's unchanging love be what grounds us today, tomorrow, and forever and ever. We pray this all in Christ's name. Amen and amen. If you're here this morning and you prayed that prayer or you need prayer for anything, you resonate with the psalmist, that your life is afflicted and in turmoil, we would love to pray with you and for you before you leave today. Several of our leaders will gather in the narthex following the service. Please come seek one of us out as we go before the Father of grace and lift up our prayers together before his throne. Would you stand and receive this benediction of our Lord? May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a great week. Go in peace. Thank you for worshiping with us at Coral Ridge. We are a gospel-centered church that equips culture-shaping Christians. For more information on the church, our studies, and upcoming events and live streams, visit crpc.org or download the Coral Ridge app available now in the App Store. To give to the ministry here at Coral Ridge, visit crpc.org slash give. You can also mail checks to the address below. From wherever you're watching, thank you for worshiping with us this morning.